Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Cobrate, a couple that loves to play board games. Specifically, Garfield games. Happy Tyler. Happy Tyler indeed. Well today we have a very special video coming to you and it is the start to a new trilogy from Garfield games and that is... Wayfarers <laughs> of the South Tigris! <laughs> Loud noises. Yay. Yay. Wayfarers is published by Garfield Games, it's designed by Shem Phillips and Sam McDonald, and the art is done by the Miko. Now in Wayfarers you take a role of an explorer, astronomer, cartographer, scholar, you name it kind of You're thing. just trying to get out of Baghdad and map out the world around you, which is really exciting. But should we do a quick overview of how to play? Sure. Now on Wafers of the South Tigris, you'll take turns until one player reaches the very end of the journal track. At that point, everyone, including that player, will get an additional turn and the game will be over. You'll count up the points and the player with the most wins. Now during your turn, there's three actions you can take. Placing a worker, placing a die, or passing. When you place a worker, you'll choose one of the spaces around the board, placing the worker on the card corresponding to the space. You'll then be able to take the action that is there. Now these actions will allow you to take different tiles across the board and upgrade your caravan, allow you to put influence markers on various spaces, as well as obtain different resources and discounts for the various actions. You'll also be able to move on the journal using the action right here. Now the tiles placed in your caravan will upgrade your dice. In the beginning of the game, you'll roll all your dice and place them on the spots corresponding above the caravan. Now if any of the tiles are in those columns, various dice will have upgraded benefits that you can use when placing them. For example, this one right here discounts the action by a coin. Now you'll also notice the four symbols, a sailboat, a camel, pigeon, and a telescope. Now these correspond to spaces that are where your dice can go. Now when placing a dice, if the space has a symbol, you'll need to place either one of the dice corresponding with that symbol or have a townsfolk card that pays for that symbol below. This way you can place any dice on that space. Now the second action you'll take is placing dice. When placing those dice, you can only place on your own board. And your own board will grow as you obtain more land and sea cards, which will unlock more dice spaces. Now if there's no symbol with a dice space, you can place any dice there, limited to one per space. But if there is a symbol like we discussed earlier, you'll have to pay that symbol one way or another, either through a dice or through another mean, including potentially paying an influence to get a sailboat. Now these spaces will allow you to obtain more cards to grow your board, move on the journal, obtain space cards, obtain space tiles, recruit townsfolk, or get various resources to help you progress throughout the game. Now, the last action you can take is pass, and if you only have one die or no die, you'll get benefits when passing. Now, this is denoted by the symbol or the blue background on the townsfolk cards. In the beginning, you'll start off with a space that will allow you to move on the journal as well as obtain a coin. Now when moving on the journal, you have to have the cost that is written in the ink blots. For example, in the beginning, you can cross freely, but as you move further, you have to have the met requirements, which is often symbols, sometimes paying costs of influences or others. Now when moving on the journal, you'll obtain whatever you land on. And sometimes that means either getting more dice for your dice pool, some inspiration cards, these purple tiles which will score you more points on your caravan, or various benefits such as provisions, coins, or even potential workers. Now there's five different types of cards. Land and sea cards will allow you to build your space out to the left and to the right, giving you more benefits for actions you take or giving you more dice placement spaces. Now you can obtain townsfolk cards and tuck them under those cards to discount the cost or give additional benefits. This one, for example, makes it so you don't need any symbols when playing a dice here as it is provided by the townsfolk. Now space cards is the majority of way of how you will score points. Now last but certainly not least, there's inspiration cards. Now, these are the doublers for your space cards. If you obtain one, you can put it above any of the cards and if you meet the condition, you'll get double the points for that space card. Now the only thing we really haven't talked about is influence. You'll have various influence markers and at times you can place influence either in one of the three guilds or onto any cards. 
If you place influence on guilds, essentially what they'll do is they'll give you various actions, which is moving an additional time on the journal, adjusting your dice two times, or paying an influence to obtain the sailboat tag when taking some of those actions. Now, if you place influence on cards, any person interacting with that card, such as placing a worker or potentially taking that card will have to pay you a coin or a provision. Now, once a player reaches the last place on a journal, everyone will take an additional turn and you're ready for scoring. You'll obtain points for the primary land and water tags. So there's four of them. You'll get points for sets as well as individually. So for example, if you have five cities, you'll score eight points. And if you have two sets of all the symbols, you'll score an additional 10 points as well. Space cards and achieved inspiration cards will also score you points, so score each of those individually. You'll look at your caravan and see any victory points within there, score those. And you'll score three victory points for each of the guild you have majority of influence in. The player of the most victory points is the winner. So what did you think of Wayfarers? Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Do you love it? Love it. Love it. Love it. I also love it. I think there's so much in this game to love, specifically the, spe the individual engines you're trying to build, the way the dice placement is utilized. It feels like a very innovative, yet natural. very natural, yeah, very flowing type of game. Like everything, there's a lot of choices to be made, but all of them kind of correspond to each other. So you'll create a little stream of thoughts. If I do this, I can do this, I can do this. And then Tyler will interrupt it. And do it better. Nice. No, the thing I really appreciate appreciate about this game is its sense of like discovery. I feel like with the previous trilogy, particularly with Paladins, it was a lot of fun to figure out the different ways of like combining ways to find your victory, mm -hmm. and then also like basing your strategy on the Paladins that you end up drawing throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Wayfarers. Uh, it's just another one of those games where I feel like you can start playing the game and depending on the town folk that come up, the islands that come up, the deserts that come up, like anything that comes up, you can kind of just look at it and be like, oh, I could use this for my strategy, but how would it work with everything else that is on the board? How is it going to help me score points? Can I use it as a multiplier? The list goes on and on and on and on and it just feels very fun to play it over and over again and Absolutely. uncover like different ways to win. Yeah, there's so much variation in the game like you just mentioned. There's the fact that you're really looking at the journal trying to path out how you want to go. And then all of a sudden, one of the, like the, your path that you initially pathed out is like, oh, that doesn't make sense anymore because I've acquired mm. these cards. Yeah. So how can I shift my strategy? Or if Tyler takes the card that I want, that was really pivotal to my engine, like what can I do to benefit from what's the current existing situations? And this game really at the heart of it is adapting to what's around you and really trying to be the best at that. Yeah, and that's another point too, is the player interaction, although doesn't feel that take thatty. it also has a sense of like you know that other people are going to go for this card because it's pretty good or that mm -hmm. it's very valuable for moving up the journal track or something along those lines but it's never like your intention to take that card from away from somebody else but it does sting when it does happen and, it, and this game has done something I don't think I've seen many other games do where you have your influence tokens and if you have a card you want, you can yeah. end up playing the influence token on them. And all of a sudden, people use that card. If they use the worker's ability there, they pay you benefits. So it doesn't mm -hmm. sting as bad when they do take it away if they do. But I think that is a really... I love the player interaction in this game because it's very... It keeps the game very dynamic. You start with two workers. Yep. But then as you play... They're not your own workers. Not, exactly. As you place them, like at one point in the game, everybody could have zero workers. And Tyler could be over here with eight or ten. And we're like... Somebody is hoarding all these workers. Why are they doing that? Mm -hmm. But, and the workers and the dice have very similar abilities that really allow you to progress the game. So it's, it uh, becomes very compatible exciting. Compatible abilities. Compa there's some similarities. Yeah, you can I don't move know. on the journal the same. You can get yeah. some tiles, yeah. some workers. Yeah. Like it's, there's similarities. But yes, they're compatible. Compatible is a good way to put it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've played this game at two and three. We haven't quite had the opportunity to play it at four yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really does shine and it's interesting how the game progresses because the players are really what makes the game progress yeah i would say that like no matter what player count you're at it kind of depends on the player as how long mm -hmm. the game is going to go because the game and trigger is that journal 
And Some arguably, yeah, if you're looking, if like more cards are coming up in any of the sections, you're getting to see more symbols, you can get through the journal track, but then four players takes a longer time. Anyways, what I'm, my point is, is that the game does not take much longer, no matter what the player count is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also really interesting because you are really responsible for the pace of the game. Like we've had two player games where we're like, let's see what we can do here. And both of us kind of like waiting, waiting to see if the other person's going to go. And then we're getting all these benefits and had a really high scoring game. Mm -hmm. Or there's games where one of us just sped to the end because they're like, I just want to get through this journal track. I think I can do this. And it was it, it's an interesting because it does change the dynamic of the game quite a bit as well. Yeah, I think that's another like really solid point to the journal track. Mm -hmm. It's nice to know that like when you move down the track at some point like you have to be very aware of what you need to be going for. <laughs> but you also can get yourself stuck which can be a detriment to yourself because you give more time for people to catch up to you. And arguably if you're doing well on the journal track it's a good indication that you're capable of moving along that track and will end up scoring a decent amount of points just from what you've been doing naturally throughout the game. Well, even the bonus at the end yeah. gives you a yeah. little bit of a boost. And you get all those, those bonuses tiles. across the tracks too. Yeah. So the more that you go, questionably the more that you get, but potentially that's not always the right kind of play. Mm -hmm. And if you're having an amazing game, you might as well just end it fast because then everybody else doesn't have an opportunity. It is funny when somebody does get stuck because I feel like it happens every game. Someone just like, oh, I can move this way. And then they get there and like, oh, 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 I don't have any stars. I don't have any planets. What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. You have to be very aware of even just using the journal action because yep. sometimes there have been many a times actually during our plays where I haven't been able to use the journal action on like a rest. Stuck. Yeah, because I'm stuck or because I didn't plan for it and now I like am forced into a rest and yeah. That's true. But I haven't been able to play the solo mode, but you I have. Did play the so solo mode. let's do a little solo mode. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I got absolutely destroyed, <laughs> but that's okay. It was a learning experience. And I think like for me, what I didn't realize is that, well, okay. So for the solo mode, there's four different um, AIs that you can play against. And essentially what they've done is they've focused them in on town folk, space cards, um, journal track, and then uh, like land cards, mm -hmm. land and sea cards. But the scary thing is, is it goes really fast and then they end up collecting, they basically get points for collecting cards and it goes by really fast. You end up having to pay them stuff and it's a lot of, a lot of stress and you're just like trying to pick up all the pieces and make sense of it. But it is a lot of fun. I really do like it. Um, I've only played the space card one. I don't know if it's a dip. I don't know if there's a difficulty uh, Track for that, but I know in one of the videos that Shem made he suggested not to do the journal focused AI first and then you pick pick between the th other three um, Yeah, did I, you find it difficult? It was difficult, uh, but it's fun it, it gives you a little bit more insight into how you should be playing games with other people as well so uh, it's not too far That's off. That's why you've been beating me lately. No, no. <laughs> it's not too far off, I would say, from the original or from like a multiplayer game. But I think like um, you just have to be more aware of what's going on mm -hmm. with the um, AI and anything. What? Mm -hmm. Now I say this a lot. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> but I... <laughs> Love the art in this game. I think, well, particularly, first of all, look at the cover. The cover in this game is probably my favorite of, out of all the games that Garfield has done. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful, it's stunning, it can literally be at the top of the shelf, just looking down and gracing us in us all's glory. Um, but the particular aspect that I really, really enjoy in this game is that way that you build the cards out. So mm. you have your initial board, but then the cards almost create this beautiful scenery around your board and they connect and it just flows and it looks so wonderful by the time yes. that you're done. Yeah. It's a very aesthetically pleasing game to play and I love kind of adding and building on to my like exploration. So huge, huge, huge kudos for the art in this game. Yeah, I think like the art is obviously very similar to the other trilogies, <laughs> but like the way that it's portrayed particularly because of the theme in this game or like the um, geographical area mm -hmm. um, that this game is based on, I think that there's a lot of stuff that 
is able to really shine through. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, I agree with you in that sense where like the art for this, probably because of the theme, um, really, really makes it something else. <laughs> Well, now let's dive into the mechanics of this game. What do we think? Let's do a quick overview and talk about the mechanics. What do we think? What do you mean, let's do a quick overview and talk well, about the mechanics? we have some dice placement. Right, but that's the... So, for those of you who don't know, the South is supposed to be um, incorporating of dice. Like, mm -hmm. uh, the... All three games the, will all, have dice. Yes, Utilize exactly. dice one way or another. Yeah. yeah, and that's what they've done in the past, like with Pal or with the West Kingdom, it was all... Uh, workers, mm -hmm. worker placement based. Um, and yeah, so we're really excited to see the dice. I think mm -hmm. they've done a really neat job in incorporating it because in this game in particular, they're your dice. Like you don't have to worry about anybody mm -hmm. else, what they're doing with the dice. Um, there are ways to manipulate the dice, which is always a good thing, uh, but it's not over the top. So it's completely random. Mm -hmm. It does feel very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's a really unique take on the dice placement because you are able to basically not necessarily modify the pip value, but modify the benefits you get from each of the pips, which is really interesting. And I haven't seen that too much before. There's also worker placement, which I love. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of spaces. And what's really cool in this space is that you place your workers on cards, but then if those cards get obtained then those individuals who obtain the cards take the workers. Yeah, and then there's other ways to get the workers and mm -hmm. your dice back. So they've got like a hand symbol that's mm -hmm. like you can, well, refresh or grab a worker um, mm -hmm. or refresh a dice, grab a worker. It's very, very cool. Mm -hmm. There's elements of set collection. Yes, yeah, uh, which you have to be very cautious about because you can get stuck whether or not, because you'll get more points for the more uh, unique mm -hmm. um, areas that you have. So if you have the um the cities uh, the cities mm -hmm. okay so the city icon if you have more of those you'll get a lot of points same thing with mountains and mm -hmm. then the other like seaside of it but also for having a set of all four of them you'll get points mm -hmm. arguably it's a good good thing to balance mm -hmm. and try to get like two or three sets mm -hmm. of the the four of them but then like go all in on another one mm -hmm. at least that's from my experience, I think the strategy. That's but, typically what I do as yeah. well too. But it is difficult because sometimes all the cards will just be like the harbors and they won't uh -huh. even have the sea. So you're like waiting and everyone else is waiting. So you're like, what do we do? Do we mm -hmm. just cap like go in all, all in on no? So it is like that set collection of it is a little bit difficult. But there's also other symbols you can collect for various points. The way that yeah, the stars goals. and the skies are laid out. You're trying to correct comments there's a lot of various elements that you're trying mm -hmm. to balance at the same time to get to maximize your point output and they all fit into these multipliers which is i think really really cool mm -hmm. uh, because you can like successfully get yourself like so many more points by having one of the like multiplier cards come up inspiration mm -hmm. cards mm -hmm. i believe is what they're called um, when they come up you can grab them and use them as a multiplier mm -hmm. given the opportunity and again they're just like sub goals that you have to go and get yourself through and they double your points. points. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so, so fun. cool. Yeah, I really like that because that really drives the game as well. Like mm -hmm. you really, once you have the doubler on, you're like, I need to get this and then also maximize the initial output yeah. in order to get as many points as I can there. So there's, I feel like in general, the mechanics just flow so nicely together. Mm -hmm. um, there, I know one of the initial things we noticed that there's so many choices that you can make. Yeah. But I think all those choices, they are interconnected. Like if you go mm -hmm. here, you likely have to go and try to get this done. So yeah, there, it's like a little sorry. spider web that you're trying to follow through and not get eaten by the spider. Yeah, exactly. It kind of comes back to my point of like, it's fun to discover how this game mm -hmm. works and how this game functions and seeing how it all flows together. It's, uh, it's exciting and I'm very happy with this game. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'll say, because I've like, I liked Paladin so much, um, I find, and I could be wrong because I haven't played a lot of this, well, we've played quite a decent amount of this game, mm -hmm. but I like the fact that you have to like start by building your engine and figuring out small things so it doesn't necessarily feel like you're getting getting anywhere in the first couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, but then once you get going and your engine feels really strong, you can start like converting that over into ways to like multiply your points, get more or more or different space cards and goals and there's just a lot going on where you have this skies, lands and mountains and all of this on your bottom board and then all of a sudden your top board, the top of your board just starts growing and growing and it feels 
really good. <laughs> My favorite's the sun and the moon. If you collect oh, both yes. of them, yeah. mega points. I like the planet ones. Those ones planet are fun. Ones are also yeah. really fun. Yeah. Okay, so now an important question is how does this compare to the West trilogy? In, it's only in one game. <laughs> it is only one game, but it is it is the beginning of. Uh, I see what you mean. Yes. Okay. But like mechanics, yeah. weight, like how it feels. What do you What do you think? Yeah, weight. I'll start with the weights. W weight. Uh, topic. Six pounds. Six pounds. No, it's not. It, it's not that <laughs> heavy. Um, but I would say it falls for me at least somewhere in between paladins and architects. Okay. Um, I don't know where I place viscounts actually in the trilogy in terms of weight. But I think Paladins is the most, is the heaviest uh, mm -hmm. of the trilogy. I don't, yeah, I'd have to think about that one a little bit more. I don't know if I agree that it is placed between Architects and Paladins. I think to me it's a little bit heavier than Paladins. Really? Because with Paladins, I feel like you're doing, everything is not, not necessarily set, but it's very in the constraints of your board. And then like those outcome tracks are like what you're going for. Mm -hmm. But I think here there's, it's a little bit more expansive. Like you can right. start out and be really focused on different types of goals. And it's very predetermined more by the board in the central area than in the own board. So, and I, I feel like sometimes it's also a little bit harder to describe because the whole dice uh, yeah, having yeah, that yeah. like the upgrade in the symbology. So I feel like this one's slight similar to Paladin is a little bit heavier for me Yeah, Paladin just has a lot going on in it. That's I think true. Wayfair is also has a lot going on, but To me it just seemed like more streamed. That's so fair. I think that's why I would say it's a little bit lighter So, but, so somewhere in that, yeah, 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 somewhere yeah. in that range, but yeah. the most important question is as we know Tyler's favorite game of all time is Paladins of the West Kingdom Mm -hmm. Does Wayfarers of the South Tigris compare, exceed, or match up to it? Exceed. Um, does not match up to it. <laughs> but it is up there. I think in terms of um, like the trilogy games, mm -hmm. the Garfield games, I think like this has become one of my favorites. Paladins still holds that top spot, but Wayfarers has like pushed its way very easily into like the second spot on the Ooh. list. And uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think for me, uh, I also really like obviously the West Kingdom trilogy and all the Garfield games. Uh, but and Paladins, I think, was also my like favorite out of all of them. Um, not my top game, but my favorite out of all of them. And I think this one is pretty close to surpassing it. Dun, I think, dun, dun, dun. yeah, I think we have to play it a few more times because mm. we played Paladins and like such hard decision. Um, but I think the element that has this one going for me much more than the others is a lot of the other Garfield games because you play them once and then I need a break. I'll be like, let's mm. come back to it. I can't play it over and over at the same time. But this one, like, I feel like as soon as we were wrapped up, we could reshuffle the cards and play again, and I'd be happy to do it again. Um, I think it's something with that, like, really variability in building the game, what you want it to be and how you want to play, and also just basking in all the decision-making. I think there's a lot, of, a lot of fun in that, and I find a lot of joy in that. So we'll see if Wayfarers takes my whole, the top spot for me, but so far it's been... A really enjoyable game to play, and I would highly recommend this game. Yes, yeah, I have nothing but good things to say about this game. I think um, another Garfield game that I am I'm I'm not surprised by um, because they, they just, just keep do getting a good better. Job. They yeah. just keep getting and, better. Yeah, so. the best part about it is I feel like they just like keep on raising that bar for me, um, and I'm just extremely happy. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for the next one and the expansions and the big That's boxes true. and everything. And yeah, is there gonna? Is this is a pretty big box? This is bigger it, than the standard. It's actually the same size as the Paladin big box, I believe. So are, for their expansions, are they gonna do the mega? I don't think uh, so. Uh, maybe, knows? maybe, yeah. So, so make sure to check that Kickstarter link down below. Learn more about this wonderful game that we highly recommend. Mm -hmm. And if you enjoy our content, 
hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, maybe even that bell notification, keep you notified when we talk board games. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And for our question of the day today is, have you played any Garfield games? And what is your favorite? What's your favorite? Is it Adrian's Wall? Is it the That's North good. Sea Trilogy? Raiders. Is it the West Kingdom Trilogy? Is it mm -hmm. Raiders of Scythia? There's so yeah, much. Exactly. Is it their new game that's coming out? <gasps> A Legacy of You. Mm. It's not out yet. No. But it's coming out <laughs> at some time. Well, let us know in the comments down below what you're excited for. And if you have any questions about Wayfarers, we're happy to chat more about this wonderful game. Exactly. Until next time, though, this is us probably going to go play Wayfarers. Wayfarers! <laughs> Bye.